You're watching the Business Channel, creating business class programs. Joining me now is Chris Hewitt, who's a partner at Lockton Companies, which is the world's largest privately owned insurance brokers. Now, we're talking today about directors and officers liability insurance. Now, what is that? It's basically um, a policy that uh, directors can take out for their own personal protection. So any decisions, any, any issues that they take uh, and do during the process of uh, running a business, the policy itself, in the event that somebody takes action against them or any of their officers, or for that matter, their employees, if acting in a managerial role, will respond and uh, assist them in defence of whatever that accusation might be. And why would you say it's a good idea to have this kind of insurance? Because the positions that directors find themselves in today are uh, more and more onerous. You've got more regulation, you've got more, uh, more law against you, uh, the Companies Act recently enacted, you've got corporate manslaughter, you've got the Bribery Act. Uh, so there's a continuous amount of legislation uh, and regulation that are uh, in front of the directors that they need to ensure that in the event that they are sued for whatever reason, that they have the ability to be able to defend themselves. Now, how are directors vulnerable if, if they don't have this kind of insurance? Basically, their personal wealth is at risk. There's, even though you might be a director of a limited company, in the event that that company fails, somebody will look for a deep pocket in which to recuperate any financial loss that they have, have received. So, despite you being a director of a limited company, you are vulnerable and the company may not be able to assist you because of the fact it may have gone insolvent, uh, bankruptcy, etc. So you are there on your own and you will then have to utilise your own assets to be able to make your defence um, with the lawyers uh, on their fees. So in that respect, you are now in a situation where if you don't have insurance, which can then pick up those costs, um, you know, your, your personal assets are vulnerable. Now, investments are risky, aren't they? They sometimes don't bring the returns that, that directors would want. So would shareholders have a claim in that case? Yes, I mean, obviously it depends on the situation and the circumstances, but fundamentally, those shareholders have made an investment in you, a director, and as such, you then have the responsibility to make sure that that investment that they have made is going to perform. Now, in the event that you do something which uh, destroys that value, they will certainly be looking to see whether or not there is an opportunity for them to recoup the monies that they've lost. So the policy, that's why the policy is there. It will then look to that situation and assist you and the director in your defence in regards to that accusation. So how much does this kind of insurance cost? Well, it varies. It really depends upon the, the risks that we're looking at. Um, clearly, you have some companies which are trading globally. And if you're trading on a global basis, especially in America, there is a higher uh, litigation potential in those sort of territories than there is compared to many others. So your profile does determine very much what, you pro what you're going to, uh, to pay in your premiums. Uh, again, the risk elements within your business is another, is another factor. Uh, the way in which you look at risk as an organisation. Uh, if you are very risk averse and you ensure that the company itself is run on that basis, then obviously that is a far better insurance uh, risk to the underwriter than it is if you are a higher risk business taking greater risks with those shareholders funds and therefore potentially the downsides of your decisions could be far higher in which case you are then a higher risk to the underwriters. And how do companies make sure that they're getting the most cost-effective insurance? That is around them, that's up to them in the sense of I'm, I'm, I'm even though I'm the broker in the situation for me what is critically important is that those companies make sure that they demonstrate through myself to the insurance industry that they have taken every precaution they could to ensure that their business has been run appropriately. So it's an all around risk mitigation. Those companies that take that on seriously, look at the way in which they operate their business, ensure they're doing everything to the best of their abilities, that is a good risk and a good risk is rewarded with a, with a, a reduced premium. The harder risks are those where there are certain elements within there that the underwriting community feels that they are not adequately taking precautions and therefore the, pre the premiums will rise. Chris Hewitt, thank you very much. Thank you.